Hello, I'm Steve Hassan, and I'm here to share with you uh, for 44 years of my life experience as a cult expert, uh, mental health professional, um, and someone who was not only involved with the cult, but uh, was rescued by my family, did deprogramming, helping other people get out. And over the course of my career, became a licensed mental health counselor, recently got a master's and doctorate uh, from Fielding Graduate University, author of four books, Combating Cult Mind Control, Freedom of Mind, Re Releasing the Bonds, and The Cult of Trump. I wanted to take this opportunity to provide something that would be educational for the public to give the basics about cult mind control, how to understand it, and I would like to share my uh, slides now with you. So let's get started. My company is called Freedom of Mind Resource Center. Uh, my theme is it's your mind and only you should control it. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger and you shouldn't let anyone else control it. And you need to understand how the mind works, how social psychology works, and how destructive authoritarian groups operate, and how to get out as well. So let's dive in and move forward. So, um, uh, my website is Freedom of Mind, and I also have a research site freedom from undueinfluence.org and let's get moving my story how did i get in and out of the moon cult you know a lot of young people have never heard of the moonies or sun young moon hak jahan the true parents of the universe but back in the 70s when i was a 19 year old i had never heard of them uh, I was a creative writing major in college, uh, the youngest of three kids living at home. I have two older sisters. Uh, was not a joiner, uh, read books, wrote poetry, uh, and was an upper junior at Queens College. But within a very short space of time, I got recruited by a friend group into this cult, which is very well known uh, for its mass weddings. In fact, I think Moon has the Guinness Book of Records for most um, people married at a single time. I think it was 30,000 couples. Uh, and to accomplish this, members believe that he was clairvoyant and clairaudient. He was the Messiah. He was 10 times greater than Jesus. Buddha, Mohammed were all in the spirit world supporting him. He was going to save the planet, get rid of sin and evil and crime. Um, and uh, these wedding ceremonies, he'd select men and women and tell them you and you. And people would have five minutes to decide if they accepted the Messiah's recommendation. Of course, most people did. Uh, of course, uh, many, many years later, most of the marriages have failed. Uh, people are very disillusioned. Uh, a lot of people don't know he, he founded the Washington Times newspaper. He ha his son has a gun factory. On my website, Freedom of Mind, I have a long list of different front groups that the group has operated. Just check the resource section. Um, of this course and you can find a lot more information about the cult. Oh, here's a, a set of images where he was in the Senate uh, office building being crowned the Messiah by some congressmen. Um, it was very controversial and upsetting that a convicted felon, he was convicted, uh, owner of a newspaper in our nation's capital, I sh might add as well, uh, could be crowned the Messiah uh, in our government buildings. But the critical question that I always like to ask people to really stop and think, how would you know if you were under mind control? 
and I'm serious. How would you know? How would anyone know? Because I can tell you 100% for the two and a half years that I was in the moon cult, people told me I was brainwashed. They told me I was in an authoritarian, destructive cult, but I didn't believe it. I didn't feel it. I guess I had a, a misconception in my mind that to be brainwashed implied that I was tortured or beaten into submission, which did not happen at all. In fact, in my story, my girlfriend had dumped me. Uh, some women were flirting with me at my campus, pretending to be students, and they deceptively recruited me. But this is a very important question. I'm going to come back to it in the course and explain that there really is a reality testing process that I recommend for anyone to understand whether or not they're involved in a mind control relationship or, or situation. What I would like to focus, I'm just going to move this over a tad, um, is on the influence continuum. Okay, this is a critically important graphic. Uh, it is on my website, Freedom of Mind. It's in my books as well. But I really want people to think about, uh, I'm gonna just grab a pointer, I think. Yeah, good. So I got a handy dandy pointer. So if you think about influence on a continuum from ethical, constructive, healthy to destructive and unhealthy, it's a very important organizing uh, slide for people to really be able to discern um, what's happening. So first of all, I want to just point out constructive, healthy influence, people and groups, involves honesty and what's known in the law as informed consent. So that if someone is inviting you to something or getting involved with you, there's no lying. There's no lying by withholding information, distorting information, or outright lying. Whereas on the unhealthy side, there's always lying. People do not understand what they're getting into because, in my experience, people do not voluntarily enter destructive uh, authoritarian cults. They just don't want to be abused and exploited and enslaved by another person or a group. Um, so let's just go through some of these important themes. I've kind of organized it in the slides as for individuals. Think about we're born with an authentic self, who we truly are. Um, and the Steve Hassan of, uh, of Flushing, Queens, New York that I was, through the mind control process, the indoctrination process, which I will get uh, to in detail in this course, I became a different identity, different belief system, different language system. I looked to Moon and his wife as my parents, my true parents, and Milton and Estelle Hassan, my real parents, who are just my physical parents. Um, and on the healthy side, love is unconditional. It's based on your beingness. But in authoritarian, destructive relationships and groups, the love is really not love. It's really they like you if you do what they tell them, what you, what, 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 if you do what they tell you to do. Um, so it's very conditional. And people find that out, especially when they start questioning and wanting to exit, they start getting, experiencing some of the negatives and the threats and such. On the healthy side, compassion. On the unhealthy side, hate-oriented. This is very important. Conscience and your own morality system versus the doctrine of the cult, that where they define what is uh, ethical and what's not ethical. Uh, and in the real world, creativity and humor is an essential part of the human experience. But in mind control cults, it's often very solemn, very fear, guilt oriented. 
and in the 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 ethical side free will critical thinking being able to ask questions is okay but in an authoritarian relationship or group dependency or an obedience to the authority figure to the group is what is critical and i have two other dimensions that i'll just go through quickly healthy leaders are psychologically healthy uh, whereas most destructive cult leaders and controllers are very narcissistic and psychopathic and we'll get into more details about what I mean by that in later slides and different parts of the course but healthy leaders know their own limits they empower other people they're trustworthy and accountable whereas Cult leaders are typically very elitist and grandiose, they're power hungry, they're very secretive and deceptive, and they want total authority and power. They want total loyalty and obedience. And then in terms of organizing principle for organizations, um, egalitarianism versus elitism, there are checks and balances in a healthy organization or in a country. Um, and unfortunately, destructive cults are very authoritarian. Their structure, um, I've already mentioned, informed consent is critically important versus deceptive and manipulative when a group or a relationship, when a person tells you a false story about who they are and what their history is, it should make you very alert that there's something wrong here. It's very interesting, but the means create the ends, whereas in mind control groups, they say the ends justify the means. So because we're gonna save the world, it's okay to lie to people, it's okay to steal in some cases, it's okay to kill in some cases as well. Uh, this is very growth oriented. This is about just preserving power. And most importantly, healthy organizations, if you don't like it, you can leave. And in a mind control group, they don't want anyone to leave. So in the mind of a cult member, there's no legitimate reason ever to leave. So when you're thinking about the influence continuum, and you're meeting somebody for the first time, I really want you to think about, are they ethical, are they healthy, or are they destructive? And a little bit later, we'll get into my four-part model called the BITE model of authoritarian control that looks at behavior control, that's up here, behavior control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. And the more a group does these um, overlapping components, the more destructive they are. Every group has some rules and behavior control. They have their own language, etc. But the really authoritarian bad groups, they use B-I-T-E to control people. So I want to just say it's not as obvious as you think, because when people are under mind control or undue influence, that's a term that the law likes to use, due influence versus undue influence. Um, you don't realize it, you don't recognize it, because they subvert your own mechanisms for reality testing. So people think it's their own free choice, uh, they can't think independently, and if they do, they're punished typically. They're often isolated from other people's points of view and critical information. Uh, they live in a cult bubble. And I just want to comment that we're living in the 21st century now, and a lot of people think about destructive cults as people with shaved heads living with robes in an isolated compound somewhere. But in fact, especially during the uh, COVID pandemic, people are forced to be online, isolated, 
and sitting in front of their computer or some screen or their phone. And because of the nature of social media and our computer and digital systems uh, and, and, and equipment, we are now in a bubble, <laughs> even if we're living by ourselves in an apartment or a house, working a job, we can still be totally isolated in our minds and an information bubble. And one critical fact piece that I want to comment on is you can't, people can't see their situation objectively. So one technique, and we'll get into this a little bit more later, is if you're not sure if you are able to think uh, critically, etc. Can you step out of your situation and see your situation objectively? Or in, when you look at your situation, you justify, rationalize all of the, the things that you're doing and such. But I believe healthy people can step out of their own mindset, their own belief system, their own organization, listen to critics and former members and assess uh, more objectively what it is they're involved with. So helping people realize they're victims of undue influence is really the first step to liberating them. And I really wanted to talk about the fundamental attribution error. Um, I first learned this in social psychology in college decades ago. It's considered to be the single most important principle of social psychology. And essentially, um, how to explain it is that human beings have a bias when they think about other human beings and look at what they're doing and they want to understand why are they doing what they're doing. There's an overemphasis on personality variables and an underestimation of the context and the social psychological variables. So what do I mean by this? Um, if you think about it, when people talk about uh, somebody in a cult, whether it's the Moonies, whether it's Nexium, whether it's Scientology, whether it's a multi-level marketing group, whatever, um, they tend to look at the person and go, oh, they were stupid for getting involved. They were weak. They were looking for something as if there was something wrong with them for being interested and curious to learn things. In other words, there's a blaming the victim phenomenon that typically happens. Uh, when trying to look at people involved with mind control cults or authoritarian cults. But what we've learned in social psychology is, in fact, the human mind is uh, doing shortcuts all the time in terms of the information that we're taking in. And we can be tricked and we can be indoctrinated covertly very quickly in some cases and it's not our fault other than not being inoculated and understanding at the very beginning of meeting a new person or even going to a website doing independent evaluation uh, before you get involved before you give any personal information um, i really also want to comment that in the 21st century uh, a lot of our personal data is now owned on the web or the dark web. And if somebody wants to figure you out and know what buttons to push, the data is out there on the web. If somebody has the money and the desire to figure you out. Um, and so we have to be extra careful especially if we meet someone or some group and, and it seems like they're reading our minds or it seems like we've known this person our whole life, but you just met them a couple of hours ago. There could be something else going on that's outside of your conscious awareness 
And because most people are ethical, at least in my experience, they, they don't think of like a cult recruiter. They don't think like a con person, con artist person either. And I know this because I got deceptively recruited and indoctrinated into a cult. And I learned to become a recruiter and recruit a whole lot of other people into uh, the moon cult. And of course, in my case, my family found me after a near fatal van crash that I had due to sleep deprivation. I should say I was sleeping about three to four hours a night. Um, woke up as I was driving into the back of a tractor trailer truck on the Baltimore Beltway at 5.30 in the morning and nearly died and needed surgery on my leg. And a deprogramming was arranged through my sister uh, and my parents and some former Moonies. Um, and that's, that's another story. We'll get into that a little bit later, but I'm so grateful that my family cared about me, uh, that they didn't give up on me, even though I was a fanatic and I tried to recruit them and they tried everything to talk to me logically and rationally and nothing seemed to help at all until that that opportunity where I couldn't fight and I couldn't run away and I was at my sister's house and my, my family confronted me with love and said, Steve, what are you doing? We think that you've been indoctrinated. We think you've been brainwashed. Oh no, you're, I'm not brainwashed. Prove it. Just give us a few days, listen with an open mind and decide if you wanna go back to the group at least we'll be able to sleep at night knowing that we did the responsible thing. But please open your mind and learn. And some of what I learned there was so interesting to me because, for example, Chinese communist brainwashing was one of the major models used to describe thought reform and brainwashing. And as a Mooney, we were indoctrinated to hate communism and fear it because we thought it was Satan. And of course, God was in the Moonies. Uh, so I was very willing to listen about Chinese communist brainwashing. And of course, the former Moonies would share their own experiences in the workshops and in the whole um, structure of the cult. Um, and eventually my mind started to, uh, to start thinking again. And I started to realize that Moon wasn't the Messiah and I had been lied to. And, um, and here I am uh, more than 40 years later. So uh, welcome to uh, Understanding Cults, the basics. And this is the end of lesson one. Thank you.